You are special unto God. God has invested so much on you. Brothers and sisters, on this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I want to speak to you on discovering and using your talents. Ten years ago, I wrote a book titled Discover Your Divine Investment. That book did very well in the market, apparently, I think, because people thought it, it is a book about how to make money, how to discover your investment, how to grow your investment, how to get a higher turnover, a higher return on investment. And one parishioner once asked me, Father, we didn't know that you are an investment advisor. And I said, no, I'm not an investment advisor, but I think my mission in life is to tell people how precious they are in the sight of God that their lives matter to God and that God has invested so much in them. And that's what I want to tell you, my dear friends. You are a divine investment. You are special unto God. God has invested so much on you. You are a treasure of inestimable value. Like the psalmist says, I thank you, O God, that I am powerfully made. And I will say, I thank you, O God, that I am so richly blessed in spite of myself because you love me. Do not let anyone tell you otherwise. Do not let even your own feelings, even your own weaknesses to make you feel otherwise. God knows you and God has invested so much on you. God has given you so many talents. You must take time to discover these talents. You must take time to develop these talents. You must commit yourself every day to using these talents to enrich the church, enrich the world, and enrich your life. As we see in the readings today, it's not always true that people who receive so much use so much of it to realize what God sent them here to do, the mission God sent them here to do on earth. In the first reading, the prophet refers to the house of Israel as the vineyard of the Lord. The vineyard that the Lord had prepared, that the Lord had enriched, nourished, put a hedge around it, planted a wine press, and manured the earth. But then, when harvest time came, the Lord found nothing. The vineyard did not yield any fruit. And the Lord says, what else didn't I do for this vineyard? And he was angry, disappointed, and brokenhearted. In the parable, we hear the same thing of tenants who receive the charge from the master to take care of the vineyard. But then... When harvest time came, they bore no fruits. Rather, out of their wickedness, they decided even to kill the servants who were sent to collect the fruits of, the la of their labors of the vineyard and eventually kill the son of the landowner. This parable is addressed to us at multiple levels. First is that you are the garden of the Lord. You are that vineyard of the Lord. You are a seed planted in this garden. God has put into you everything 
that God wills for you to become the best person that you can be, the best version of yourself, for you to bear fruit, like the Lord said to his disciples. It is my Father's will that you will bear fruits, fruits that will last, not just today, not just tomorrow, but forever. The Lord, who is the master, just like a good investor, is watching over you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's watching over you. He's giving you the grace so that you may bear fruit, fruits that will last. But like the wicked tenants, sometimes some of us do not bear fruits. Why? Because in some instances, as we read the same parable in the Gospel of Mark or Luke, then the tenants or the servants begin to compare themselves with others. The one who buried the talent, who did nothing with it, will compare himself because he thought that others had received more than himself. Or the tenants in the gospel today, they were greedy. They were lazy. They were presumptuous and did not use their talents. It might also be that the reason they did not bear fruit is because they feel a sense of entitlement. Because the parable was addressed specifically to the elders of the people, the Pharisees, the scribes, who felt that they are entitled to God's kingdom, but then they rejected the greatest treasure that God had given to humanity, the Son of God, who was present in their midst, they rejected him. How many times, brothers and sisters, have we neglected the gifts that God has given to us? How many times have we failed to use these talents? God has invested so much on you because God trusts you. God believes in you. God knows that you can do better, that you can do so much with the gift of who you are. Therefore, you should get about the task of using your talents, realizing your gifts, praying every day that God may help you to see your gifts. But it begins with appreciating who you are, that you are special unto God. Indeed, the Gospel of Luke chapter 8 verse 15 gives us a clear understanding of the kind of attitude that we, we, we need in order to live and use our gift. It says in the parable of the seed, as for the rich soil, there are people who with a noble and generous heart receive the word of God and they receive it in their heart and they persevere. They work hard and bear fruits because of their perseverance. That's what we're being asked to do, to persevere, to receive God's gift with a cheerful and generous heart, a noble heart, and to stay focused and to work hard, applying the values that St. Paul offers in the second reading. Everything honorable, everything just, everything true, lovely, whatever is gracious, whatever is excellent, whatever is worthy of praise. Think of these things. The world today, brothers and sisters, is in need of people who recognize the gift of God that God has given them and who recognize the gift of other people and who can work together in realizing these gifts. Look at the earth with everything in it, how we have made this earth, destroyed it by our, our carelessness, by our selfishness and greed. And then 
we have created a sick world because of our environmental degradation and how much we have destroyed the earth. Look at how much, how much we have destroyed our lives and the lives of other people because of greed, selfishness, pride of self, and lack of love. So let us make that commitment, brothers and sisters, that we will love one another, that we will work together, that we will use our talents, and that we will glorify God by applying our talents to the service of God, to the service of our neighbors. And as you do this, may the hand of the Lord be upon you.